So this will review social action theory and personal life approaches to the family. So the first thing we need to know about social action theory and personal life theories are their micro, their small scale, their action approaches. So they suggest that we as individuals have agency and freedom to control our lives and they don't fit into the consensus or the cat, uh, conflict categories, then, then neither. Uh, methodologically, they, they take interpretivist approaches, so it's about qualitative data, a lot of validity, lots of verstehen, and the view of society really is to focus on the meanings and feelings that we have on the family. Now, the first theory we have is Beckett, who talked about trial and error parenting. So the idea is that Beckett said that socialisation processes are not one way, they're not from parents to children and down through the family, but also parents are learning from children. So the idea that parents are, you know, you don't get taught how to be a good parent. Parents are learning as they go. They use trial and error. And what this suggests is that socialization is two way. Parents are learning how to be parents. They're also teaching their children how to be part of society. So socialization is going in both directions. Uh, and it's a long process. So it's important to counterbalance these macro theories where everything's really kind of looking at socialization from top down from society to the individual whereas this recognizes it's a two-way process uh, it's quite good for that but it does have the problem that it doesn't look at power struggles like age patriarchy uh, and these inequalities that are based on wider structures clark talks about the four types of marriage so argued that marriage is not a one-dimensional thing you're not happy or unhappy in marriage uh, and to do this, they used unstructured interviews uh, to get their data. And what they found, there were four types of marriage. So there was the drifting, where they were unclear about the future and the couple lived day to day. You had the surfacing, which was looking at reconstituted families uh, dealing with problems such as former spouses and children having conflict with new partners. You had establishing couples where they were trying to plan their future together, save for homes and the struggling. So experiencing financial difficulties and were very pessimistic about the future. A positive is it does recognise that marriage is a varied thing. It's not one type and it does recognise that it changes through the life stages. However, it, you can't really explore variation based on class or ethnicity or sexuality because it only focuses on the micro aspects of family life. And lastly, you've got her Harvin. So uh, it talks about life course analysis. So before 1970, most people followed the same life cycle. You grow up, you get married, you have children, children leave home and so on. Um, but this is more about individualization and looks at the life course being less predictable now because of choice, diversity, freedom, flexibility, and we have more agency. So the idea being that because of all this different family types, because of diversity, because of choice, we can't assume everyone has the same family structure, order and routine. So we need to look at people's lives and their family structures to understand the life course that they have taken. So it's really a good way of looking at diversity, but again, also how people attach meanings to these changes. And also this was really relevant in that late modern, uh, early postmodern era. Um, so this is different from life cycles, which is kind of fixed and rigid, a bit like, you know, like a frog life cycle. Um, and it does suggest that people's lives now are less predictable. Uh, there's more choice, it's changeable. And it also highlights, you know, what, what we consider the normal family is, is quite an, is an outdated concept. There is no such thing as the normal family. Um, so it is really focused on individuals as units of analysis rather than the family as a unit of analysis and individuals kind of paths and routes. Now, personal life I've kind of separated here because it's not quite social action. It's not quite postmodernism. It's somewhere in between the two. But what we've got here for personal life is we first have smart. So smart says that we are not individual people with many relationships, as the postmodern this was suggests, that we are connected to others around us. So this highlights the connectedness thesis. The five ways we're connected would be through memory, biography, embeddedness, relationality, and imagination. So memories of the family, biography would be documents and photos recording our role in the family. Embeddedness would be the connection to um, our family roots and our sort of like your heritage and your, your sort of family name. Relationality is obviously the relationships you have. And imagining is this the kind of the family we, we think we have and what we really have. Fictive relatives and families of choice also come under SMART. 
you've got Miss Dahl who talks about memories being really important. So the memories we have of our family can influence the relationships and families we have. So negative memories of our parents getting divorced may delay or prevent people from wanting to get married or, or set them into having cohabiting relationships rather than marriage. And then Morgan talks about what we do. So it's our role in the family. Family practices are important part of shaping our identity within our family. So taking the bins out once a week, doing the washing up every other night, cooking a family meal, our role in the family justifies, identifies, secures our place in the family overall. So it's really what we do in the family that is important. And there we have it.